I'm going to testify against myself until there's a charge for me to answer to. Well, they can't even charge you without a name, obviously, right? If there was an injured party, they could charge me no matter what. Guy that we arrested punched this other dude in the face, right? Okay, well, they, they have no name to take the summary convictions, and that's actually in a, I've got a Supreme Law uh, case about that, Supreme Court of Canada law, lawsuit, where the police can't even arrest you if they don't have a name to take the summary convictions court. And that's the name on the driver's license. That's why they need that so badly. Any form of ID, government ID, because they can only take government agents to summary convictions court. All kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So anyways, so the, and then I, I, right after I said that with the magistrate, and I said, uh, besides, I said, I don't even know who you are. There's a voice on the phone, ooh, you know. People who hear voices go to the loony bin. So I don't know who you are. So this guy could have called his grandmother. I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. Like, really, this guy could have called his grandmother just to get me to spill my guts on the phone. Shouldn't I need some verification of who I'm speaking to? So I said, excuse me, are you a public servant? Well, there's just silence, and there's like, well, well, no, no, I'm not. Well, yes, I am, but but I'm not. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. And there's just silence for a couple of minutes on the phone. And the, the cops are looking at me, and they're going like, oh, you're in really big trouble now. I was like, oh, thanks, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Anyways, and uh, when they came back, the magistrate first said, you know, I, whoever you have there, you get him to the Selkirk courthouse now. Well, I was out the door, in the car, to the Selkirk Courthouse and brought into a courtroom where they already had a trial ready, like a hearing. <coughs> there's a judge, there's already a crown, there's paperwork scrambling all over the place. I've been in jail for 28 hours now. They have no name to take the summary convictions court. And I just told that lady on the phone, who I don't know who she is, that my human rights have been violated. I haven't harmed anybody. And I'm not going to give her my name because there's no charge against me. I'm being held without charge, and we're now on hour 28. Well, you better believe they had court in session by the time I got there. But then, as soon as I got there, I went back to the, some of the same stupid friggin' arguments. First thing I should, first words out of my mouth to uh, the justice should have been, "Excuse me, are you a public servant? Who are you, people?" Who are you, my objector? Yeah, but I did. I went right back. I just said, well, I'm not giving you my name because there's been no charge, you know, blah, 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 this and that, the whole nine yards, which is correct. They, they couldn't do anything. They did throw me in jail for another three days, but that was a really bad idea on their part. But that's all they could really do is try to hold you for what they claim is 72 hours. It rolls over into 90-something. If you've got a fee schedule in place, it's all damages. So you don't care. But be prepared to go to jail for at least a couple of days. If you're not prepared to go to jail for a couple of days, Keep your license, pay your taxes, give tribute to Caesar, and enjoy. Keep your head down and don't bitch about a thing the government does. Oh. Period. That makes me so yeah. So, who are they charging in court? Well, every police complaint I've ever read, even when I went down to the RCMP and initiated an investigation into their conduct with me, when they took the information and they went to write down my name, I spelled it out for the guy. I gave him my affidavit and I said, that's my name. He goes, oh, okay, so. <coughs> and this is where, I, I always wondered, a little story on this, I always wondered whether cops know. I always wondered that, these bastards know. You know, because I'd be a lot more personally offended if they really did, as opposed to it being just bad, poor training. Or a combination of both, which is most likely true. Well, it depends on how long they've been up, how high they've been up, all that stuff. All that stuff. So I went down and I got this, I uh, asked for a uh, Royal K mounted policeman. I want to make a complaint or whatever. Just I knew it was going to go nowhere. I just like to see what happens when you actually when you do this. So I gave him my affidavit and I said, this is my name. This is what you can call me when you refer to me. Whatever you want to say to somebody, that's my name. There's, okay, so he starts uh, filling out the complaint. <laughs> I grabbed a piece of it. I said, no, no. And I actually took the pen and I scribbled it out. And I wrote it properly. I 
I said, I said, that's not what I told you. You just converted my name to something that's not me. Spelt it wrong. And he wouldn't even look up. He goes, he goes, I can't write it that way. <laughs> he wouldn't look at me. I said, what do you mean you can't write it that way? He goes, uh, for our records, I can't write it that way. I said, I don't give a shit about your records. That's not my name. He's like, I can't write it that way. I'm like, right, whatever. He said, write it whatever you way you want, then I don't give a shit. So he scratched out where I corrected it, and he went back to writing my name like that. Why is that? Well, that's the public servant they're taking to court. That's who the complaint is made against. So they're having a hearing in court for this guy, my legal person. The complaint has been made against that guy and you're giving the paperwork to that guy. Hmm. So now we have three different identities. We haven't touched on this before. We've talked, spoken about how public servants are all they take to public servant court, which is summary convictions, right? Where they're having a hearing for this guy. They're getting you to show up. But what they don't want you to know is that you're actually representing this guy. That's who the that's who the char, that's who the complaint by a police officer has been made against. They can only deal with public servants. Their only real authority is over public servants. Even if it's a an actual charge, if some, if I actually had a real bona fide claim against somebody, I would take them to Queen's Bench which can hear criminal and civil, right? But if I don't know my rights, and I've been duped all my life into thinking every time there's a problem, I gotta call the cops, right? Which is a police service. They're not providing us with a service. They're like, uh, uh, when they advertise, it's like any other corporation that wants your business, and they want your business, why? Just like an insurance company, when you contract with the police and make your statement and sign it, you're contracting with them and you're subrogating your rights to them. If you have them charge somebody and take them to court and that person goes to jail, do you get any money out of that? No. You don't get any remedy. Why is that? Because the government contract. You agent. subrogated it to them. They're collecting on the damages. Believe me, they are. They're getting paid, and they're getting paid well. They're getting paid what you should be getting for damages because you decided to use a service to enforce your rights instead of doing it yourself, right? They're collecting on all the jail bonds and the court bonds and everything else is being produced, all the securities. They're collecting on all, them and the Crown, and they're all in cahoots to do it too. So anyways, that's the guy, that's the public servant. Three identities, holy trinity, oh, holy shit. <laughs> if somebody can find me a complaint in their court file where the name is spelled any other way than that, I'd love to see it, because it doesn't exist. That's the public servant identity that they don't want you to know about. So you go to court and they're having a hearing for your legal person that you are the beneficiary and grantor of that you're also the director of, and that you're also the public servant of now. You're all three. Who are you going to court against when you go to court? Yourself. Yourself. You're your own worst enemy. We can touch on that another day. Absolutely. Yeah, the hearings for your legal person, it's against you in a different capacity. Who else could you be going to court against? There's no injured party. Because there's no injured party, except for your legal person, I guess, technically speaking. They're claiming a public servant injured your, your legal person. The problem was the public servant was you. You have a contract to protect yourself. So that's how they steal from your estate. Mm -hmm. Who gets the damages? Do you get a check in the mail with uh, the name of your legal person on it? 
No. Mm -hmm. So who gets that? Them. Good little theft gimmick going on. Yeah. Anyways, I'll wait for the red dots to be coming through my windows uh, whatever <laughs> night this gets put on the internet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever. He's living with it. Yeah, like I say, I don't care. We were all created energy when I dialed, go back to me and that, whatever. I don't that's care. That's, okay. that's, that's why people need to watch movies like Braveheart, you know? I won't do the speech. But I'd rather fight now. Yeah. Because I would be like that. I'd be one of those old bastards dying in his bed going, Son of a bitch, I should have done it when I was younger. <laughs> you know? So, um, okay. Not okay. Okay. So we're done talking about that. We can elaborate. Uh, people who watch the videos online, if you've got questions about that, honestly, send them in. Turns out we do read them. And I will reply to something, especially once we start getting into more specialized classes. Uh, liability issues. Okay, everyone's scared to death of liability. We talked about it earlier. It's impossible for an insurance company or anyone else to assume liability for your actions. That's why insurance is a scam. It's a con job from the get-go. No one can ever assume liability for your actions. If you kill somebody on the highways, does the insurance company go, oh, no, no, what's, what's, what's that murder charge worth? Oh, no, here you go. Oh, no, it's paid. No, you're not going to jail. It's okay. No, you're held liable for your actions. It's a scam, right? And what it also is, it makes people not responsible for their actions, especially when people think they're covered by insurance. So this is kind of where we're, now we're getting out of like any actual statutory law and getting into like free man uh, theories, well, free man society kind of stuff, or whatever you guys want to call it, uh, free men. Um, <clears throat> what people have to understand, this is why I get into the whole honor system. Uh, the word freedom and responsibility are the same word. They're synonymous terms. You cannot be free without responsibility attached to it. And the simple proof for that is, um, would a zoo be liable if, one of, if they had people come into a zoo and they had live tigers running around everywhere and one of the tigers ate your kid? Would the zoo be liable for that? Yeah. Probably. So where are the tigers? They're in cages. Okay? So if the zoo is not responsible, or they limit their liability, well, no, we, we took our, you know, we took precautions. We made sure that they were, you know, locked up and stuff like that. Okay. Of course, animals aren't responsible for their actions, anyways. But if you don't want to be responsible for anything that you do, then you're going to be in a cage to limit the damages you can do, can do to society, and rightfully so. I don't want some axe-wielding maniac out there running around, you know, burying his hatchet in people's heads because he's not responsible for his actions, saying, I'm a free man, I can do whatever I want. Well, no, you can't. You just harm somebody. You just cut somebody's head off on a Greyhound bus. And you got out two years later. <laughs> so anyways, that's, that's my dig at that. Yeah, exactly. Just for the record, that guy did not clean Greyhounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... He was not a member. Yeah. <laughs> no responsibility, no freedom. If you don't want to be responsible for anything you're doing, then you shouldn't be free. If you want to take all responsibility, which, which you're going to, you're going to be liable for everything you do when you're not operating in society, then that's inherent freedom. You have the freedom to do what you want because nobody's assuming liability for your actions. Right? So we're actually the most responsible people on the roads when we drive with our own plates and without a driver's license. We have to be the most responsible people because we are we we don't have the the, the delusion that an insurance company is going to cover anything that we do. We're responsible for our actions, right? And then uh, that this now this is where this where it gets into driving again. Now a lot of people always say, well, well, if you hurt somebody or destroy their car, how are you going to pay for that? You know, that's why you, you guys can't do what you do. It's like, well, okay, number one, they're the public roads. When you leave your house in the morning and do anything in society, you are assuming the risk that you might actually get damaged. A car might just careen out of nowhere and just, and just kill you. Does that mean you're owed money? No, like, shit happens. Sorry, deal with it, right? If you want to be protected every minute of your life from the time you're born till the time you die, then go live in a bubble somewhere, in a basement, and don't ever leave. But as soon as you do leave and you leave your home, it's with the understanding that everybody else that's out there has assumed the risk that they might get injured while they're out there, right? 
that's just life. Deal with it. But that's how government gets control over us. They, they, want, they want us to be afraid. Oh, do you want to be out there and have someone just